This video is to work through the mineral data sheet to look at the minerals that you need to be able to identify for A-level geology. What I want to look at in particular are the key diagnostic features, the properties of these minerals that allow us to identify them. You should have a mineral data sheet uh, in front of you and a highlighter pen to pick out which properties are the most important. Okay. Quartz. Uh, a very common mineral um, whose most distinctive property is its hardness. It's got a hardness of seven. Um, that's harder than a, a knife or a nail. Um, sometimes you get quartz growing in hexagonal crystals that come to a, a point, uh, like a prism or a pyramid top. Um, but it's the hardness that's key. Colour, particularly for quartz, uh, is of no help at all. It can be a whole range of different colours. Now, one of the most common minerals we come across, particularly in igneous rocks, is uh, the feldspars. There's a couple of types that we look at. First of them uh, is orthoclase feldspar. Um, the hardness of this is six, so it's just a little bit harder than uh, a nail or a knife. But the distinctive feature here is its cleavage. It has two planes of cleavage at 90 degrees to each other. That combined with a, a pale color tells you it's feldspar. Now orthoclase is most commonly pink in color or pinkish. Um, that's not always the case. So you can, if you wish, just describe a mineral as feldspar and that's perfectly correct. The is plagioclase. Very similar properties. The only real difference between them is that plagioclase tends to be uh, sort of white or, or pale grey in colour. But it is possible just to identify these minerals as feldspar. The next mineral is very, very distinctive. It's part of a family of minerals we call mica. Now mica is uh, relatively soft. Uh, it's a hardness uh, two and a half to three, so it's just harder than a fingernail, but softer than a coin. Um, but the key feature is its basal cleavage. It has one plane of cleavage, so it splits into parallel flexible sheets. Now there are two types of mica we look at. Uh, this first one, biotite, is very dark in colour. It's brown or black. Muscovite mica, the other type we need to know, uh, has the same properties except that this one is much lighter in colour. Uh, this is um, white or, or perhaps most commonly when we see it in rocks, like a silvery colour. It looks like little speckles of uh, um, glitter in a rock. Hornblende is one of two minerals that we uh, can call ferromagnesium minerals because of the iron and magnesium that makes them up. They are uh, effectively black in colour. I know the data sheet describes one as greenish black and the other blackish green. Uh, you're not going to tell the difference between them. The key feature uh, of um, Hornblend and the other ferromagnesium mineral orgite is its cleavage. Hornblend has two planes of cleavage either 60 or 120 degrees to each other, depending on how, how you're looking at it. Um, and it's dark black in colour. That shows very, very similar properties, except for the cleavage. Orgite has two cleavages at 90 degrees to each other. It's a subtle difference, but an important one. Olivine, then, is a rarer mineral. We only find it in mafic or ultramafic rocks. It's very high temperature, very high pressure mineral. Um, it's quite hard, but uh, similar perhaps to some of the other uh, silicate minerals we look at. This is one of the minerals where colour is very distinctive. It's an olive green colour. It looks like fragments of bottle glass.
We now move on to consider some metamorphic minerals. This one, uh, andalusite or chiastolite, they're different minerals, but they look the same. We, we put them together uh, for A-level geology. The distinctive feature of um, these minerals is its shape. It grows in metamorphic rocks and it grows in these long needle-like crystals. If we look at them in uh, cross-section though, uh, they're, they're square in shape. So they're long, thin squares. Um, some of these minerals as well, if you look very carefully, in the middle of the square cross-section, you'll see a dark colored square. They are very, very distinctive in their form. The other metamorphic mineral we look at is garnet. Um, garnet is one of the hardest minerals that we um, have to know for A level. It's a sort of a reddish, really dark reddish brown color. Um, very, very beautiful mineral in my opinion. And one of the distinctive features of this is it's again its crystal shape. It's called rhombododecahedral. That means it has 12 rhombus shaped uh, crystal faces and it very often will grow into that shape. Chlorite is also a metamorphic mineral. Um, we don't often see good crystals of this. Uh, it's a hardness of two, so it's very soft, uh, softer than the fingernail. Um, it has a greenish color, um, so it can make some uh, metamorphic rocks just have this green tinge, and it does feel a bit greasy when you hold it uh, in your fingers for a while. Um, it's quite an unusual mineral though, we don't see it very often. A mineral we do see a lot is calcite. Calcite is the main constituent of rocks like limestone, and it's got several very distinctive properties. It's hardness of three, so it's softer than a coin, harder than a fingernail. Its cleavage uh, is distinctive because it gives uh, rhombus-shaped um, cleavage patterns. So you've got three planes of cleavage, all of which are at 60 degrees to each other. Most distinctively, uh, if you drop some uh, hydrochloric acid on this mineral, it will fizz, it effervesces. Uh, as a result, it's very, very easy to identify this mineral. A trickier one is fluorite. Um, fluorite uh, has uh, octahedral cleavage. Um, it's like a cubic crystal and that's sort of chopped off at the corners. Um, perhaps the most distinctive feature of it that we're likely to come across is its hardness. It's hardness of four. So it's harder than a coin, it won't scratch a coin, but it's softer than a nail. If you happen to have a UV light round, it will fluoresce, but that's uh, unlikely to happen in your practical exam. The colour of fluorite is massively varied. It really doesn't tell us very much at all. Halite, or rock salt, uh, another very distinctive mineral. Uh, it's quite soft, uh, cubic cleavage, but quite a few minerals have cubic cleavage. Key thing with this is it's soluble. If you hold it in your hands for a while, it will feel greasy as it starts to dissolve. It's so soluble that if you lick it, you'll get a very distinctive salty taste. Gypsum is the softest mineral that we need to deal with. You'll easily scratch gypsum with a fingernail. There are some other properties, but you don't often, uh, or you don't, certainly don't always see those. It's the hardness that's key to identifying gypsum. Barites is the old fashioned name, barite, the perhaps more modern name. Uh, it's quite an unusual mineral. Uh, it can be pink or white. It's hardness, nothing particularly to write home about. It's about the same as a copper coin. Key property of barite though, is its density. For a, a non-metal, this is very dense. It feels in your hand denser than you'd expect it to. You can see bladed crystals. You can see them in the, the photograph here, but it's the density that's really key to identifying barite. 
chalcopyrite is the main copper ore really valuable stuff um, and is a mineral that can be confused with pyrite fool's gold the key difference here is hardness they're both uh, minerals are sort of a yellowy metallic uh, color and luster but chalcopyrite has a hardness of four it's um, not scratched by a copper coin but it will be scratched by a nail pyrite on the other hand can look a similar color but it's that bit harder it's a six so this won't really be scratched by a nail that's what allows to tell them apart both of the uh, chalcopyrite and pyrite can look very similar they both have a similar streak for example but it's the hardness that tells them apart galena which is the main ore of lead is very distinctive uh, it's a lead gray color cubic crystals and the key thing here is it's very very dense this is the densest mineral that we uh, uh, have to identify in geology density of 7.5 it will feel uh, very dense in your hand hematite then which is the main ore of iron um, has a distinctive or can have a distinctive crystal shape uh, it forms these kidney shaped or these rounded uh, masses we call them uh, botryoidal or mammillated um, uh, crystal form key property here though is its streak it's a very distinctive cherry red streak um, no other mineral that we deal with will have that streak and that will be the same regardless of what color this particular mineral is okay those are the minerals that uh, you need to know on your mineral data sheet you should have uh, those key properties identified um, the more practical we do the more familiar you'll become with these